My guest on today's show is a topless glamour model burning up the internet scene. But not only that, she's also college educated, a gamer, a wrestling fan, and a future top selling author. Today, she'll add special guests to her list of growing titles and accomplishments. My next guest is the total package. Space Gang, I present to you only one Rhonda. Welcome to the show, Rhonda. What's going on, girl? Thank you for having me. Appreciate that. No problem. Thank you for coming through. I really wanted you on the show from the start, but I felt like I had to uh, get my stuff together before I got. I had you on. <laughs> oh, we we there, we there. <laughs> it's all right. I, I can't have you on and then like half ass it. So, okay. So to the to the listeners, today's episode is is focusing on Rhonda. But I felt like Rhonda had a whole lot of insight and skill to deliver a very interesting episode on internet modeling, adult and adult content creating. So Rhonda, Mm -hmm. what's it like being an internet star, an adult content creator? Oh gosh, Um, it's definitely different than when I wasn't. Um, you're, I, I find that like now when I go outside a little bit you kind of like wonder does this person know that you know I do this so um, I guess there's a bit more of a self-conscious feeling when you're outside so that's one thing that's um, different about it it's also uh, it's pretty cool it's pretty laid back because you kind of because you're your, your own boss you uh, make your own hours and stuff like that you kind of work according to your own flow of things so um that's pretty cool about it and you also deal with like a different or a lot of different personalities rather so mm. that can be interesting too um <laughs> some people are well, a lot of people are actually nice but then you definitely have people where it's like whoa okay i gotta block you this is a little too much but yeah, it's um, it's interesting. If I could put one word on it, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you said like dealing with a lot of different people. Yeah, and I imagine you you get like the craziest men and women in your inboxes <laughs> and stuff all the time. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you handle that? Um. I just try to be nice to everybody and just, I answer back as much as I can. I don't respond back much on Instagram because Instagram, there's so many people. If I really sat there and responded back to everybody on Instagram, I I wouldn't sleep, eat or anything else. Um, So I try to keep everything controlled through Snapchat and answer everybody back on there. But yeah, I just try to be nice and, or not even try to be nice. I am nice. So I just, yeah, you're probably one of the nicest people. Yeah, like the the only time though I'm probably mean or I guess what people will call a bitch is when I receive that energy back or receive that energy rather. Um, and then I'm not such a nice person. <laughs> but. And you know, uh, we men, especially when it comes down to internet models or women on the internet period, we get possessive. Mm-hmm. The reason is weird. And if we get responded to in a way we don't find favorable at the moment. We are, we we tend to call women out their name. Yeah, someone will get maybe a no. They don't want to hear no to the question that they asked. And um, I guess we'll feel very entitled. Like they should have got a yes. And then it's like, well, you know, well, F U B and B and, you know, stuff like that. Can I cuss? <laughs> Um, I'm pretty sure we're too late for that. <laughs> um, I don't care. If it gets the points across, go ahead. It's fine. Okay. But yeah, basically that that can happen. Or, you know, they'll try to take a low shot or a low blow, rather. And um, try to insult what you do. Even though, like, five minutes ago, they wanted what you do. 
for free in their inbox. And so. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's crazy. Yeah. The the men's side of the world, we, I don't know, man. It's, I, I find it confusing no, all the like, time. You know what, too? You can't even just blame it on guys because girls have been similar, too. Oddly. What? Yes. In my mind, I always thought the women was a lot more yeah. nicer about these things. They don't get as aggressive um, in terms of like insults and stuff like that. But there is like kind of a begging type nature to it after you say no to something. So, yeah. How do you respond to that? It's like to the girls, no, is no. or to anyone. Well, it's, it's kind of different for different people. It really depends on, like, the energy I receive that kind of mm. helps me dictate what I'll dish back out. <laughs> so if, like, someone is nice and I'm typically nice, if someone is rude, then depending on what day it is, I might either block you or I might be rude back. And mm. when it comes to the girls, though, I try to always, like, be nice to the girls and kind of, like, let them down gently. And that's probably why they don't always see, uh, I guess the fact that I'm saying no and they kind of keep asking so okay. yeah I'm probably not helping myself by being nice sometimes but <laughs> I don't probably like not. people's feelings <laughs> but yeah you imagine it has to be a, a degree of cutthroatness there yeah, yeah from your side definitely you mentioned um, going out in public and wondering if people notice you how how do you juggle uh, your family and friends knowing what you do? Well, like, only my mom, my dad, and my siblings know that I know of because those are the people that I tell it. I don't know if other, like, family members know. And if they do, they're definitely not saying any, anything about it. Um, <clears throat> but my my mom and my dad are, and my siblings, they're pretty understanding to the whole thing and kind of, you know, just respect my choice as an adult and let me, you know, do what I want to do. And they're there for me if I need, you know, advice or somebody to talk yeah. to. Maybe I'm stressed out about something. Um, now, I was most afraid, though, of telling my mom. And it's so odd because my mom is really like free spirited and I should have had no problem at all telling my mom. But like, when I was younger, I don't know, I was always kind of seen as like the good girl, I guess. Mm -hmm. So I felt in a way that I would be kind of disappointing her or like destroying the vision that her and like other family members have always kind of had of me. Yeah. So, yeah. But we're, uh, we're on a good page. When I told her, she was like, why were you afraid to tell me? Like, that's completely okay. She's like, you look great show it off she was like if i looked great i'd be doing it so <laughs> <laughs> that's so yeah. dope <laughs> yeah so uh, i, I got a cool afraid to mom. here i am afraid to tell my mom that i had an episode like this coming up i'm like man i don't know how she react not that she's um, a mean person or anything like that but she's very religious oh, okay. she is very much in the corner of jesus i, I mean i am too mom if you're listening i am too mm -hmm. i'm just saying just said we kind of have different views on the world but this is what this episode is about is to kind of take away a bit of the the scab or the veil okay. that's on it and humanize yeah and i will people, knowing that your mom listens to this i'll make sure i don't say any bad words <laughs> <Out of respect. laughs> as long as as long as it's not coming from me, which I do curse sometimes, and my siblings get mad when I get away with it. But <laughs> as long as it's not coming from me, hey, siblings, uh, it'll be fine. Okay. Okay. Let's, let's jump back into this before we get too far off subject. Mm -hmm. um, you have a book coming out. Yes. Can you tell us what that book is about? Yeah. Um, so basically, it's about teaching potential creators like the pros and the cons of adult content creating and then also mm. in the book I want to teach them different techniques um, some of them are actually marketing techniques that I've learned in class and stuff like that um, to just you know show them how to grow their brand and also how to create quality content so yeah that is pretty much what it's about um, 
I find okay, that okay. like a lot of people get started and don't really know what to do. Um, I was one of those people and I kind of, I feel like I started kind of wrong, kind of pricing things inappropriately or um, not making videos long enough or not promoting myself in a good way and just different things like that. So I feel like the book can kind of help answer some of those questions for other people. I mean, I might have to read that book. I'm going to. <laughs> Are you, you going to start content creating? <laughs> I, I'm saying I might give me give me about June July get this body right <laughs> you don't know I might get up out there now That's terrible. put on the bow tie okay <laughs> yeah I'm probably gonna creep a whole lot of people out that I probably won't do that but still <laughs> okay so speaking of a book to help people what advice would you give to people that are thinking about getting into it oh. or that's in just something you know, don't give away your book just something you don't mind sharing okay my biggest piece of advice or one of my biggest pieces of advice is really just to be sure because once something is mm. on the internet you can't take it back that's it it's on the internet and being an adult content creator is something that can affect your future opportunities your relationship your family even just your your individual self you know mentally yeah. So it's definitely important to be sure about what you're getting into. You don't want to like get online and start creating stuff that you're going to cry about like a week later. So yeah. <laughs> you, you got to be sure. And then um, another thing I like to tell people is like F the bag. <laughs> That's what I say. Um, and when mm -hmm. I say F the bag, I mean like forget the material things, forget the Gucci, the Prada or whatever it is you like to buy like there's a lot of money to be made in adult content creating so you want to take that money and reinvest in yourself and also invest in other things so that you know you have money down the line and this wasn't done in like vain you know yeah because who wants to like you know look five years down the line and like oh yeah you got a couple material things that are probably like no longer in style but you know you show your but on the internet and don't have anything else to show for it so yeah man that's dope advice i hope you guys i hope you guys are listening because that was some a1 advice right there like real Thank talk you. <laughs> um so speaking of material things and i know we are going through this quarantine thing and i don't want to touch on it too much but has it affected your modeling any I wouldn't say it has like at first I, I'm sorry wait you said the COVID virus right yes okay I don't know why my mind heard T virus I'm thinking about Resident Evil or something <laughs> oh no let's, let's hope that never happens <laughs> but yeah so at first I thought it would because during like the first few initial lockdowns I did see my subscriber count drop a bit but after that it kind of soared so I was like oh well I guess I am going to be okay um so right now it's doing all right but I do think that once um we hit the peak you know this peak everybody is talking about where there's going to be far more cases um yeah there's going to be more strict lockdowns probably and a lot of people won't be working so We'll probably definitely see a decrease in like how much we earn in the whole you know adult modeling world i think you'll be one of the ones that'll be really fine um because yeah. i've seen some of your content and it's great i hope so you're gonna be great <laughs> speaking of quarantine mm -hmm. how are you passing the time other than modeling what are you doing to just you know keep your mind relaxed actually video games you're playing anything like you that you know what i'm barely playing mm -hmm. video games right now but I will get back to it. Um, right now, I'm actually really focused on redecorating. Um, we just moved and I finally have a video studio. So I've been putting that together and making that, you know, what I want it to be. So that's pretty much where my time has been going. Um, and of course, making videos. But yeah, mostly into redecorating. So let's 
kind of switch gears to not working mm-hmm. and just talk about random crazy okay. stuff because I like to talk about random crazy okay. stuff. So <laughs> if you were a food, what type of food would you be? <laughs> um, <laughs> fried macaroni. <laughs> Wait, did you say fried, fried macaroni? Fried macaroni, yep. Because I'm kind of cheesy I... um, and oh. unexpected. That was actually a good answer. I wasn't expecting yeah. at all. <laughs> so, fried macaroni. I never thought about what type of food I would eat. <laughs> you got to pick one. I'm probably definitely going to be something with cheese. Maybe pizza. That's a good one. That's a good one. I can be spicy sometimes by accident. You know? <laughs> by, <So>. by accident. <laughs> okay, so choose two artists that represent your personality. Oh, gosh. Okay, so I'm going to cheat a little bit. Well, actually, a lot of it because it's, it's the same person. But I'm going to say Beyonce and Sasha Fierce. And the reason... Definitely cheating. <laughs> The reason is because, like, I don't know, I I admire how, like, driven Beyonce is. <clears throat> um, and I feel like she has a bit of sass, like, when necessary. And, you know, I don't know, she seems really, yeah. like, into her work and about getting stuff done. And then at the same time, she also seems really humble. So, and passionate about what she does. So, yeah, that is, I feel like I can relate to some of those things or actually all of that. <laughs> good good answer good answer yeah. I, I didn't think you was gonna be able to land that answer at all but you did <laughs> I was thinking like I, I have to use the same person for this one twist it up a little bit <laughs> if anyone cares um, mine is Neo and Lupe Fiasco uh, with a touch of CeeLo oh why did you pick not oh well Neo is because there are songs he has, not the ones where he's cheating, because I've never cheated ever. Um, when he's talking about love and relationship, I can really relate to those things. And it, mm-hmm. I could pick songs if I had time that I could probably just say, yeah, mm-hmm. I could have wrote that. Let's say it that way. Um, Lupe, I could be a bit of a revolutionary yeah. when I want to. Contain way more contained than Lupe, but when it comes down to especially being pro black, I'm like super pro black. I just don't show it on <laughs> Facebook. Not that I think it's offensive, but I just don't yeah. feel like arguing my positions. That's definitely um, understandable. And CeeLo. CeeLo, because you know, I I like I have mm-hmm. somewhat of an old school feel. I kind of like tackle things in an old school way but with a new school twist on them so at least that's how I feel I have an old soul so it is what it is yeah so let's talk Wrestlemania okay what was your favorite Wrestlemania moment from Wrestlemania 36 I gotta say the Boneyard match that was definitely my favorite um I feel like Undertaker and AJ really showed out um Mm-hmm. I was actually like, I don't know. At first, I didn't even want to see it because I was kind of against Undertaker for the past couple years because I felt like he was getting just way too old and too slow. And I don't know. I feel like the way they produced this one and making it look more like a movie, it was really beneficial for him. And it just, it was good. And then I, I love the ending where he did like the, this is awesome. He didn't say that, but he basically did, did a kick like that. And, um, you know, that was good. Cause I had thought he lost at first and I was like, oh wait, no, like, you no, know, he, he revives from the, I'm not revives, but you know, <laughs> comes back from the grave. <laughs> yeah, I, I totally agree with you. I, up to this point, I thought Undertaker's career has been mild is is kind of been boring a little bit especially after that last uh match he had uh, in saudi arabia with cobert yeah. i just feel like everything the has been yard. kind of mediocre with him after brock lesnar 
Yeah, I can totally agree with you on that one. Uh, Brock definitely stole his mm -hmm. thunder. Uh, no pun intended there. Yeah. But he got it back yeah. this time. I mean, I hated it was off of AJ's back, but AJ will be I fine. think I still always have like the match between him and Triple H in my head where they're like beating each other's ass and stay down, stay down. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh man, Triple H and Undertaker was dope. You know what? Triple H and Shawn Michaels. I mean, Triple H and Shawn Michaels. No, Undertaker and Shawn Michaels was pretty dope too. Yeah, it was. Oh man, good times. So, for me, my favorite match from WrestleMania 36 was definitely Charlotte and yeah. Rhea. It was a bit weird how the internet reacted to the sound effects being that there's no crowd right now. And for some reason, someone said it was like watching porn, <laughs> which is stupid. What? Um, The match itself, I, I definitely wasn't watching the same match apparently because I didn't catch any oh, of that. Gosh. From my point of view, they were like at each other's throats. Like it was aggressive. It was emotional. I hate Rhea loss, but Charlotte being on NXT, I I, I kind of take the, mm -hmm. the trade off on that one. Oh gosh, yeah, that was a good match. <laughs> I I do feel some kind of way though about not having any audience, but I understand like why there's no audience right now. It just don't hit the same though. So yeah, it don't. Um, but I will say the back and forth between the wrestlers, especially during the matches. And some of the mm -hmm. promos have been really interesting. Now that the audience is not there, they get to play around a little bit more. Um, they get to be yeah. edgier in some cases. So yeah, that's true. It's a nice that's true. Maybe um, when the crowd returns, we get to keep some of the good stuff that was happening and, you know, add it to the flavor of WWE. Yeah. I wonder if they can do like a maybe having like a stream of different uh, videos from fans on the side or something, just so we can kind of see some type of reaction during this time. Oh man, that would be that would be cool. On oh, like the little screens they got in the mm -hmm. audience right there, that would be yeah. kind of dope. I think WWE should hire you. <laughs> I don't think they will. <laughs> well, especially yeah. not right now, man, with the talent oh, that yeah. they're letting, letting go. Man, this is go. sad. I heard they let Rusev go. Perfect. Yes, it, which is the most left money on the table moment I've ever seen in my life, his entire career. Rusev Day was on fire. Yeah, we still got the game, yeah. I guess. Um, let's switch gears. Because, okay, so for the space game that's listening, I've said this before, but I'm gonna say it again. I like Chris Rock's movie, uh, Top Five. It's one of my favorite movies. Um, I don't know if it's in my top five movies, <laughs> but it's still one of my favorite movies. And in that movie, he always asks the people that he runs into uh, about their top five. It's like uh, the thing of the movie, of course, obviously. So we talk hip hop top five and everybody that comes on my show has to have a top five, hip hop top five. But Rhonda doesn't have a hip hop top five. And I know I said hip hop top five like eight times. Maybe you should drink every time I say it. But um, she has um, just um, an open top five, we'll call it. It's just whatever artist, musical artist she wants to throw into her top five, that's what we're going to do. So, without further ado, Rhonda, tell the people what your All top right, five so is. I'm going to go with Beyonce, of course, Jay Z, Doja Cat, Janae. I'm not All even right. going to butcher her last name. And I'm actually, <laughs> I'm actually um, feeling Vince Staples. I um, started listening to him recently, so I haven't heard everything, but like what I have heard so far, I do like a lot. And I like um, his music videos too. They're very artistic. So, yeah. That is 
I've not listened to this. You should. Staples before. You should. He's dope. Uh, like he hasn't done new stuff in a while, from what I've like picked up on. But he's definitely worth the listen. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say check out "Lift Me Up." That's one of his like dopest songs. "War Ready" and uh, "Prima Donna." Those are pretty dope. Yeah. Oh man. The title yeah. sounds interesting. Yeah. I will and say watch that. Watch the videos too while you listen so, to it because it's like it's just a experience with everything. A much better experience with everything. I would definitely add that to the things I definitely have to do list because I do have one mm-hmm. of those for some reason. But um over on the BK Space Podcast Facebook page, um, I have a uh question of the day up and the top five comes up and so far, we've had maybe one or two people um, answer mm-hmm. back and some very interesting results from that. So if you have a Facebook, you should go over there to the uh, BK Space podcast page and tell us what your top five is, because I'm interested to know. Mm-hmm. Also, speaking of top fives. I'm actually a mm-hmm. Beyonce fan. And if I just had to have an open top five, I think Beyonce would probably top yes. that list. I'm pretty sure she would, because she she's killing it right now, still. I mean, she could drop an album on the day of, and people still go and have to I listen to it. So. Queen. <laughs> she's facts, facts. And and the because <laughs> you know, oh, gosh. it's too. I'm definitely not gonna slander the beehive. I refuse. Nicki Minaj's fan, the whatever they're called, and the beehive are two fan bases. I will <laughs> never, never right. publicly slander because they will slaughter you <laughs> in in real time. Right. They will take you out and counsel you before I get started. Trending on Twitter for the first time <laughs> in a bad way. <laughs> Right, but hey, listen, Rosenberg was always getting saying stuff and getting into trouble. So maybe it'll work out for me too, like it works out for him okay. and Charlemagne. <laughs> you know, I no, 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 I wouldn't. But I'm just saying, there's a possibility there. Maybe. So I gotta let you go because I know you mm-hmm. you're running out of time here. So. We need to know where we can find all your great pics and, and videos. So plug okay, your socials so for us. On Twitter, Instagram, and Tumblr. I can't even believe I still got one of those, but um, and I'm barely active on that <laughs> one. But anyway, um, and also YouTube. You can find me as only one Rhonda, and that's spelled out as only one. There's no numbers. And my name is spelled R H O N D A. And on Snapchat, it's the same thing, only one Rhonda with the number one at the end. So that is where you can find me. Um, and my website is onlyonerhonda.com. Wow, I didn't know you had YouTube yes, and I a website. I'm going to start making uh, videos and stuff like that, helping people uh, learn how to edit um, like adult content and stuff like that on YouTube. Yeah. Oh, cool. Um, maybe I need to go on there so I can uh, get this uh, feed website <laughs> off the ground. I'm, I'm joking. I'm kidding. Um, as far as my social goals, just so you guys know before I let Rhonda go, uh, the BK Space podcast on Facebook and the BK Space on Twitter, the BK Space show on Twitter, and the BK Space on Instagram. That way, Rhonda also know where I be at too. So when I start um, posting random dad jokes and stuff, she can uh, retweet them. She won't, but I can trip, okay? So Rhonda, I, I want to thank you for coming on the show. It was a blast having you on. I can't wait to have you on again, where we can dig into some more deeper 
uh, social issues and so people can really get to know the mind of Rhonda and not just yes, Thank you. I appreciate you having me and thank you to everybody who actually tuned in to check us out today. Um, yeah, that is pretty much it. I hope you guys are washing your hands and all that stuff. I'm going to keep on saying that when I, you know, can't think of other <laughs> things to say to people during this time. <laughs> I mean that's that's pretty good. That's a good thing. For some reason, I've seen more hand washing tutorials than I like to admit to, uh, which is crazy. Now they're using paint. <laughs> no idea. But yeah, I'm just yeah, saying it's I weird. Need to see that? It's weird. <laughs> no, no, you don't. It's it's not even fun. Uh, actually, I did see an adult model. Uh, Wash your hands while jumping oh, up and down. Oh, you're talking about on, uh, those Twitter. type of videos. Yeah, I've seen a couple of those. People need to know how to wash their hands. Yeah, like, wash under your nails, people. Doing that for that reason, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not knocking it. <laughs> Somebody is finding values in those mm -hmm. videos. So if you haven't heard about Anchor, let me explain. It's free. There's a creation tool that allows you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you. So it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimal listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Spade Game, thank you for listening. All the new people to the Spade Game, uh, welcome. We're going to have more shows, more entertaining shows, um, more social issues. Um, the crossover crew will be in pretty soon. We're going to have some fun there. My next show is with Ace McFly. So that should be coming next Friday. So look out for that. Actually, we're going to talk uh, 90s cartoons. Look, he won the competition. All right. And the promise was if he went, well, if any of us won, we get to pick my next topic. And the next topic is now going to be top five 90s cartoons. So we're just gonna have five and we're gonna talk about that. It's gonna be weirdly awesome. So come through anyway. <laughs>